So here we are again, Hearts of Iron 4. Today we're going for the Holy Roman Empire. For those of you who have played Crusader Kings, you know how much of a mess it is. And for some of you who've tried this in Hearts of Iron 4, you'll know how much of a pain it is. For the record, this is my third or fourth attempt completely scrapping a video just to bring you a run that actually works. Trust me, the strategy is sound. The strategy works. Single player, new game. Let's go, playing as Germany and we'll restore the Holy Roman Empire. Iron Man mode on with historical AI focuses, let's go. First off, this strategy is very different from the one I used in my first video, it's a couple of years old. That one was all about aggression on Yugoslavia using the chain reaction of guarantees between the Czechs, the Yugoslavs and the French to just take out France, Czechoslovakia and that was it in the initial war and getting you a good head start. That still works, but it's extremely difficult. Trust me, I wouldn't bother with it. So today we are going with a strategy devised by Amtasil. I highly recommend you check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. He has worked this out and it works remarkably well until you get to Italy and have to fight across the Alps. Sorry if I'm a little salty. I just had to throw away an entire recording because I got stuck on the Italian Alps for almost a year while the Soviets started steamrolling me. So I'll try and do better. While we're out here restoring ancient empires, I do hope we don't run into other ancient dangers. Vikings. Oh man, every time. <sighs> At least these Vikings aren't coming for my stuff. Now the Vikings War of Clans team reached out to me to sponsor today's video, thank you very much, and asked me to try the game. Oh, since it's free, why not? And honestly, it's a fun little game. I quite like the building and the management. You can send out heroes to do glorious battle and uh, send my raiders out to take stuff. You can train a bunch of different units to flesh out your roster, you can level up your hero to make them even more dangerous, and the game is still getting lots of love from the devs with frequent updates after 7 years. Vikings is celebrating its 7th anniversary and they are getting a huge update this month including Jotunheim, the realm of giants, 3 birthday monster events, blitz competitions every 2 days, and a boost for new players for up to 20% each week. So don't miss it out. Click the link in the description if you want to be part of it. So again, help yourself and help out the channel by downloading Vikings for free using my link in the description and become a conquering hero in the world of Vikings. Don't forget to look me up. I am Bittersteel with a three. Just don't take my stuff. So research the basics and we're going to use the extra slot for armor, medium armor. I like tanks. Now, I'm not going to hold your hand through this and tell you what to research because it doesn't really matter. Keep your industry up to date. For engineering, get the first tech of mechanical computing and then ignore the rest. Do get the radar techs and the radio techs. They're very good. Air, you got good fighters, keep them. Get the Focke Wolf 190 when it's about 360 days left. It's worth going ahead of time. For the artillery, keep everything up to date. Ignore anti-tank. For the armor, use the bonuses from your focus tree to get 1940 mediums early. You'll thank me, these are great. Then support companies don't really need anything other than engineers, they're pretty good. And logistics companies, if you want, you can get some of the fancy trucks. And for infantry equipment, keep all of this up to date. And you might want to get these, the first level of mech, because it just buffs your trucks as well. All right, construction, we'll just build uh, sieves in the Rhineland, that's good. And production, we'll put one more on toward artillery, we'll finish up fighters and the rest on close air support. And we'll get rid of the tactical bombers. Then we'll finish production of whatever's in the naval queue. I know a lot of people say, eh, just get rid of all the large hulls. Yes, probably, but I don't want to. I like these big ships, so I'm gonna finish off everything in the queue. Then the military, let's just organize everything. We got 24 infantry divisions, they can sit on the Polish border. Then we've got about three tanks and a motorized unit. We'll put them into a single army as well. We'll park them also on the Polish border. Poland is going to have a very fun time here. That leaves us with a horse and a mountaineer. The horse can go to, uh, what's this, Prussia. At least the mountaineer, he can cover the south here. Don't worry, he'll get friends soon enough. Put everything under a field marshal. Assign generals later, doesn't really matter. Recruitment, uh, cavalry. They are the smallest division we have and we want two runs of 23 to fill out those two armies we've just uh, parked down that only have the single units in them. Now we pretty much just wait. I could trade for some rubber though. That's 
not a terrible idea. And now we get going. We want to have 60 political power before we pick a focus. Why? Well, speed, really. Without focuses, we can get a lot of political power very quickly. And there we go. Just as I finish assigning general 60 political power. We'll start out by justifying on Poland for Danzig. Danzig or war. That leaves us 10 PP, means we can pick a national focus and we will go with army innovations. You want the 10 PP because if you go negative, you instantly cancel this justification. As for the cavalry, keep force deploying these. Just mash this button on high priority. Mash it, mash it, mash it good and keep the army exercising. If they're not green, they're not terrible. Well, they're still gonna be terrible, just less terrible. While we're fiddling with all that, just group up the entire navy, put it in the high seas fleet, assign whoever really. Same for the air force, group everybody up in a big airfield. All right, we can spend some political power. Now we could assign chief of the army or military high command. You know, I really like getting Rommel early, but for some, inexplicable reason. Whenever you go to civil war, Germany loses whoever it has assigned here. So instead, I'm just gonna go a different approach and I'm gonna hire an industrial concern. EH Farben, not bad. Krupp, not bad. Tank designer, also pretty okay. Aircraft designer, like all of these designers are pretty okay. I'm just gonna go and grab Krupp, at least boost my industry research somewhat. And now we're just gonna hoard political power. We'll need quite a bit of it. Industry, we can go concentrated. Don't like that that much. I think dispersed is the better option. Treaty with the USSR is done. Now we move on to the four year plan and get the industry pumping. And of course the Soviets accept, they always do on historical. That means we will now have a nice bonus to 1940 mediums moving forward. And we're gonna use that nice little bonus to get the 1940 mediums well ahead of time. 600 days, we'll get them about 1938 so more than well ahead of time four-year plan is done on to autarky or with poland is creeping up that's good we can stop exercising the armies once they're at least level two all right justification is finished we're immediately going to declare war easy peasy lemon squeezy to the north here, immediately march some cavalry into Danzig. It is still demilitarized and we can link up by taking Gdynia. The infantry can just attack. I don't need the battle plan. And we'll use the armor with concentrated pushes, trying to cut off as much of the Polish army as possible and then just rush the victory points once we break the army. Also gonna hire Hjalmar Schacht while we're here, might as well. Oh, before I forget, just put the air force up air superiority close air support and logistics strike the navy well you could raid the lower baltics but i don't really think you need to let's just bomb it instead and just like that i've encircled a good portion of the polish army around poznan already we'll just destroy them and move on not really much of a threat left here we finished autarky could go for the hermann goering werke but i think we can oppose hitler and start this whole thing and there you go it is all over and take all of that sweet sweet polish land and now we also get rid of that sweet sweet german army oh yes now everyone wants their mifo bills repaid vultures all right we got five days left so what we're gonna do here is talk to spain and we're gonna send them a lend lease and by lend lease, I mean we will send them literally everything in our possession. Well, we're gonna promise them the entire German stockpile. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And with that promise made, we'll watch our equipment disappear into the sunset. There we go. Oppose Schmidtla. Purge this Nazi scum from our lands. There we go. Von Mackensen is disappointed. And von Mackensen will make Germany great again. We now have 24 divisions. They're all pretty terrible. And yeah, this is what we get. Don't worry. That is also what the Nazis are going to get. So uh, we can make this work. We can make this work just fine. And we do have a couple of things we want to click here. First off, conscription laws. We're going to go to extensive conscription. Because, well, we're not aligned now. It's the only chance we'll get to go to extensive conscription. And war economy. That leaves us with 45 political power. So we do want to get this one. Sharpen air safety regulations. What this one does, it gives us a terrible modifier for a little bit. But it prevents the Hindenburg from blowing up. And definitely want to prevent the Hindenburg from blowing up. Now for recruitment, I know this is cheesy. This is super cheesy. I am aware. I am just going to go into my mobile battalions, cavalry, and just... Just make this a unit of this. This is trash. I know, but I can queue up a whole lot of this trash. And when they deploy, I can convert them into something a little more suited to battle. Before we unpause, let's renegotiate that lend lease here. 
And by renegotiate, I mean, I'm not going to send you anything, Primo de Rivera. You're on your own and on pause. Now, because we took Poland earlier, that territory stays with us. As a result, the Nazis have two big borders, one with our land and one with, well, also our land, Poland. And they're going to start railroading troops out. You can see here they're moving troops off the front line to cover this territory. That's bad for them because they also only get 24 divisions. As a result, we will see massive, massive gaps in the front line appearing soon. And we are going to make use of that by, uh, well, quickly cutting them in half. Now, as for research, I am going to go a little bit ahead of time for advanced machine tools. This is about a year ahead of time, well, two years ahead of time. And we're starting to cut our way through already. Anyway, before I forget, let's just sharpen the air safety regulations so we don't get the Hindenburg blowing up. And we're going to take the Kaiserwerke for more civilian factories. Now that we have cancelled all that lend lease, we have a bunch of fighters at our disposal. Let's just get a little bit of oil and make sure our airplanes can actually stay in the sky. And we're already about to make Nazi Germany very, very sad. And we haven't even deployed our cheese units. Anyway, that's it. German Reich has fallen. It is all over small price to pay there we go the german civil war ends let the rebuilding begin um as for the nazi leadership i recommend you hang them as for the army let's just give everyone a nice little break here good with kaiserwerke finished we will move on to secure the new state ah there we go the hindenburg incident you'll notice it hasn't blown up got a pretty long germany here don't we all right we have secured the new state we now continue to revive the kaiserreich also, next one will be Return of the Kaiser, but we need 40% support for the Militärregierung. That means we're going to need to do some politics and we're going to raid all opposition. That tends to be how we do politics, right? That That's how you do political things. Just get rid of everyone. I'm also going to start gathering a bit of a military high command. Erwin Rommel is my first choice. But on the other hand, I do need a lot of political power for what's to come. So we'll hold on to our political power for just a little bit. Perfect. Return of the Kaiser. Now, Return of the Kaiser is going to spark an event with the Netherlands. We're going to ask them for pretty please can Wilhelm II come back. He's living there in exile right now. And they will always say yes because the German army is just so massive. Except when there is no German army. That's when the Netherlands feels strong and they will say no. And no is exactly what we'll need and no is what we'll get. Anyway, uh, Kaiser returned. We will soon get an event. Next focus is going to be expatriate the communists. I'm sure the French will love this. They love communism and we're just going to give them all of ours. And the Netherlands have blocked the return of Wilhelm II. Excellent. We could go to war. Don't want to. Let's instead just get Wilhelm III. He's one better, is Oh, God. No, he doesn't look better at all. Anyway, with Wilhelm now in the saddle, let's also reinstate his right of succession. And while we're at it, let's modernize the succession laws, because why not? And we do have a little bit more political power. Let's also... There we go. Recall Paul von Lettow-Wobeck. Google this man. Trust me, you will not regret reading his Wikipedia page. Anyway, with all that behind us, we can now properly start remilitarizing. We have no decision yet to form the Holy Roman Empire. Don't worry. Soon. Speaking of soon, Austria here. Let's create a faction. Any faction with Austria and Germany in it will be the central powers. Central powers. There we go. Communists expatriated. And now we will accept British naval dominance. And there we go. We got the Austrian event. Yes, the lesser German solution was a mistake. All right, British naval dominance accepted. Eh, they like us a little bit more. They'll like us more after this. An alliance with the Shade. We're going to ask them if we can pretty please join the Allies. And we do need them to say yes to this. So let's just take the focus and also start improving relations. Everything else is moving at pace. We're doing excellent in my book. All right, alliance with the Shade is done. And hurrah, the German Empire joins the Allies, setting our differences aside for now. What else do we need? Well, we need them to like us a little bit more, a lot more. And there we go. Let a day take by and we're suddenly at plus 80 because of our improved relations in the faction and accept British naval dominance. Now, they don't like the world tension we've generated, but we are just about right where we need to offset that. Just a little bit more to get restoration of British titles. We need them to be at 100% relations. Well, let's just go and get there, of course. 
Let's go to the UK and guarantee their independence. This is going to bump up relations by 25. Ooh, 35, actually. And that is going to be just enough to click that decision. Hurrah! As for focuses, we will now see to the Eastern Front and walk all the way down here to support the Finns. The British government accepts. Excellent. We can either all travel together and, um, spoiler warning, we will all die together or we will send a liaison. And this is why the Hindenburg is just blown up in London with the entire royal family in it. Except for our liaison, Princess Victoria Louise. The Kaiser is dead. Long live the Kaiserin. And she's pretty good. Like, look at those stats. Oh, baby. These are stats. And not only that, we now have the option to revive the Holy Roman Empire. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Anyway, we are done here with Neville Chamberlain. We have joined their faction. We got what we need out of the UK. So let's just leave. There we go. But I am going to ask for military access. Don't worry. I'm not going to order 66. I just want to use my fleet, send them over to the central Mediterranean. Now that we've left the allies, we can start our own little faction. With our eye on the Soviet Union, we are now going to create the Abwehr, the German intelligence agency, and we will start stacking collaboration governments on the Soviets. And with the Abwehr created, what we want is localized training centers. This will allow us to train a Russian spy. Going to need a Russian spy. Any other operative tends to get caught like instantly and our armor is also rolling off the production line so five light divisions you know what rommel can drive them around if he wants to every baltic country has accepted our guarantee and a couple of them are even willing to join our faction is estonia willing estonia is not willing they need more non-aligned support but they'll get there and now we support the Finns. all right Finns are supported and they will join our faction as well. Time to move back to this side, get the Wilhelm Wagen and the extra research slot and invite the Finns to our faction. Great. Actually, I want to see if I can just put some pressure, diplomatic pressure on somebody like Hungary or Bulgaria. Get them into my faction just because it would be funny. And of course it worked. Bulgaria is willing to join our faction. This is just too funny. It is too funny. I'm going to see if I can do that to Hungary as well. There we go. We can now invite Estonia to our faction as well. They should say yes. Great. That means the guarantee has disappeared and we can cheaply guarantee the independence of Greece. And that will allow us to go to war with Italy should they come a knocking. Now with our spy network over 50%, I've put it on quiet so the spy doesn't get caught. I've put the other spy in Italy for now. We will be fighting Italy. All right, Finns are supported. So we filled out the military cabinet here. We are doing so well militarizing, but we also need to keep an eye on the supply lines. It's either going to be the Italians or the Soviets that strike first. Usually it's Italy. Italy that goes for Greece, while the Soviets, they... Wait a very long time to go for Finland. All right, first collaboration government is finished and we're immediately going to send out the second collaboration government. And Italy's gone with the Novus Imperium Romanum, but they couldn't get Bulgaria in because we already have Bulgaria. Ha, I got Bulgaria. Finally, the last 200 PP that we desperately need. And come on, come on, come on. There we go. We can get the Blitzkrieg Theorist. Right, so this might be difficult. The supply is bad and the terrain is quite possibly worse. What I'm going to do is park one army on the border with Italy. Hopefully they will be able to counterattack after the initial Italian assault. I'm also going to move up my mobile units. Actually, I'm just going to put everyone under Guderian or Rommel. Sorry, it's just a lot easier to coordinate. I'm going to use my trucks and motorized here. And we're going to try and smash through to either Bolzano for the supply hub. I think that's where the supply hub is. No, I was wrong. Well, in that case, we're going to try and smash through. I need to get to the planes around Venice and then I can start getting some work done so we'll see what we can do with these units the air force is in position they will give the italians quite the headache and we'll put them on air superiority close air support and logistics strike they're gonna have so much fun there i am keeping the rest of my army on the soviet border mostly because i know the soviet union is now going to go after finland next that is the second 
collaboration government done in the Soviet Union. All right, one more to go. All right, Italy has gone to war with Greece. Greece is now calling upon us to come to their aid. And we're bringing a lot of friends. We're going to rush through these front lines and we're aggressively going to attack with the infantry. And just like that, our fighters are up, our bombers are up and we are shredding the Italians. Ah, as expected, Soviets have now declared on Finland. We will now find ourselves in a two-front war, which is actually not too terrible. Our army is more than capable enough of holding the Soviets at bay while we deal with the Italians. Once the Italians are crushed, we'll finesse ourselves a nice peace deal and we will hammer the Soviets with everything we have. And Soviet Union isn't home. Uh, okay, we'll just walk up to the front line wherever we can, uh, take places like Minsk, like the supply hubs on the border, because of course we will. Uh, if the Russians aren't going to defend themselves, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, do what I do best. Kill everyone. Still punching through the Italian lines cleanly. The terrain isn't the best, but with our air power and just the sheer terribleness of the AI, really not much of an issue here. Oh god, I've got their entire army trapped in La Spezia. This is oddly satisfying, just how easy this is all going. Uh, the Russians have decided to show up, so I'm just gonna halt that offensive for a little bit. I just wanna mop up the Italians, get this mess sorted out. Just now gotta make the crossing here at Messina, if I can... F actually, don't actually need it. I just need La Spezia here to fall, that'll do. And there goes Italy. Now, we got Yugoslavia into this peace deal, so we gotta be careful. We need to take the right land. And the right land is Istria, the tippity toppity of Italy here, Emilia Romagna, and Tuscany. That is it. Everything else can go to someone else. The Kingdom of Italy knows its place. Victor Emmanuel is there. And we hold all the territory we need. We'll take Luxembourg easily, Alsace-Lorraine from the French, Savoy from the French, Sudetenland, Bohemia, etc. from the Czechs. Swiss states shouldn't be a problem. Yep, everything we need. We're right on track. That is the third collaboration government done in Russia. I'll divert my attention to, let's say, France next. We're gonna go on a little field trip. We're gonna cut the Soviet lines apart and we're gonna run roughshod over them, trying to get as many encirclements out as we can. All right, we've taken Kiev. From Kiev, we're gonna try to cut down here uh, Mikolaev. And with our air power in position, we shouldn't really have too many difficulties doing this. Not expecting the Russians to put up that much of a fight. They're pretty distracted as they are. And we'll just keep cutting into ribbons as we go. Finland is losing, but they're being slow about it. That's good. Uh, we've essentially won. Just gonna use my tanks to uh, rush for the victory points and uh, the supply hubs. And that is that. Romania has just ceded Bessarabia while we were balls deep in... <laughs> The Soviet Union. And we've also got a justification going on against us. Hungary. I don't know what you're trying to pull here, Hungary. But you're gonna have a bad day. And with that, Stalingrad is taken. A little more. We can get to Moscow. It's gonna be all over. Well, I have the distinct feeling that this is over. While we wait, might as well just start justifying on other countries. I am gonna justify on the Netherlands. We're gonna justify on Belgium. And we're going to justify on Switzerland. We're just going to justify on everybody, really. The guarantees don't matter at this point. We only need to occupy the territory, not own it. And we're more than powerful enough to argue with anyone who disagrees. Big ol' lag spike. That means Soviets capitulation. We didn't even take all that many casualties. And with the Soviets defeated, Romania has decided to take back three of its territories. Because I, well, I passed a bunch of times. Which is... Not too terrible, but it does mean I cannot click take all states. That button is grayed out and I hate it. So now I just have to manually click through everything. All right, I think that's everything. And I've just gotten repetitive strain injury, but that is all of the Soviet Union taken. Oh, glorious. Look at the occupied territories here. Sitting on 100% compliance, baby. We can actually just create a collaboration government in the Soviet Union. I get the game lags more when I'm creating a Soviet Union than when I'm deleting one. Ah, German Russia. Perfect. 
but they are a very high compliance puppet, while Italy, which we just puppeted, isn't. So this is always a good way to get yourself a good puppet. A very good puppet. And from this point forward, we are pretty much just gonna kill the enemies we have left. We need to kill the French, the Benelux, the Czechs, and that's it. That is all we need to form this glorious nation. Anyhow, at this point, we're done with all the fancy trickery. We will steep the world in blood to claim what we still need. Easiest way to do that is we're going to take out the Netherlands, also going to justify on the Belgians. And when we have those two, we'll have a clean avenue into Paris, which, of course, the French will start throwing out guarantees. And then we crush the world, of course. We keep training. The army must always expand. Denmark joined the Allies. Uh, okay. I guess I'll have to put troops up there as well. And it looks like we're just about ready to kick some Dutch behind. After which we'll also go for the low countries. They're all picking up guarantees now, which is obvious. It's 1941. The world tension is at an all-time high. It does not matter. The German juggernaut at this point in time is unstoppable. Just look at our faction. Central powers, baby. Central powers powers all right there we go justification has finished we will now declare war we will kick everything off this is the end game we win or we die uh the french are gonna come in they're bringing the entire allies with them we're not gonna call any of our own allies they're just a liability we don't need them so we'll declare on the netherlands the infantry can rush in we'll use the tanks to batter our way through to rotterdam the hague amsterdam etc and it should be fairly clean sailing the air force is also deployed over the benelux like a knife through butter just carving our way through i think the netherlands have already been defeated yep <laughs> <laughs> the Netherlands have already been defeated. I could just sit here, wait for Belgium to finish their justification, take out Belgium, take out Paris, and then just focus on the continent, really. We're just gonna punch a hole clean through. We're gonna go for the heart of France. Now Belgium's in the Allies, as expected. Like, look at this, we're tearing through them. Look at that, Belgium's gone within days. I don't think we have much to fear here. Might as well just justify on Luxembourg. And the French are very much next. So if you're quick on the ball and you get a little lucky with naval supremacy, you should actually be able to, uh, well, get the United Kingdom as well. We're not so lucky, but we'll get there eventually. We have all the time in the world. Besides, the goal is to form the Holy Roman Empire, not to conquer the world. Triumph in France. How will we handle this? We can establish Bourbon France. No, Germany will conquer all. All we need is Alsace-Lorraine. Let's just do no. Germany will conquer all. I'll hold on to that land for myself. Thank you very much. And we're going to divert troops just to guard all of our coastline. Now I just do a little bit of mopping up, really. We'll stack the infantry around Czechoslovakia. They are most definitely up on the chopping block next. After Luxembourg, I put my tanks around Luxembourg. I'm also going to justify on the Czechs. This is going to take 240 days, which is a long time. So I have a better plan. I'm going to cancel my justification on Luxembourg justify on them now okay 160 days that's a lot more reasonable and then i'll justify on luxembourg it's gonna be 185 days yeah and after that all we need is the swiss and i don't really fear the swiss if i'm honest now i do realize this ending is a little bit anticlimactic but end of the day we're here to form the holy roman empire and that is exactly what we'll do if you want to see me try that hyper aggression strat later maybe we can make something happen finished our justification so we're gonna declare war on the Czechs. this should be fine again call none of your allies in and now we justify on the swiss 185 days we're just gonna launch an all-out assault with the infantry and the armor here we're gonna start pushing carve this country in half with our air power up and our mass infantry formations just doing the lord's work this really is not a challenge anyway we've just carved through Czechoslovakia like it doesn't even exist. Just the power of air, tanks, and good infantry, and they are, like, the fort line didn't even matter. Crumbled within days. Look at that. Their numbers just didn't mean a thing. There we go. Czechoslovakia done, and all we really need now is Swiss and Luxembourgish states, and we're working on all of those. Oh, man. 
We're gonna go to war with Luxembourg soon. I hope my army's up for it. And now we solve the problem of Luxembourg. That's yeah, easy peasy and they're gone. Don't really expect much from them. Yeah, that is another problem solved. That just leaves us with Switzerland and in about 160 days, that problem will also be solved. And just like that, we control pretty much all of Europe. We have our war goal. We can declare war on the Swiss. We can end this once and for all. And Germany will form the Holy Roman Empire as it should. Look at the Swiss fall. Oh, making a stand on Bern? No, no, not much of a stand anyway. And like that, the last bastion of democracy in Europe falls. Well, they are falling. Come on. Am I really pushing him back to a single tile? There we go. The last bastion of democracy in Europe has fallen. And with that, we can revive the Holy Roman Empire. And we get a bunch of cores. Let some time tick by. Boom! 3.8 million manpower rebirth of the holy roman empire the eagle flies and conquers all 234 civilian factories 203 military factories a couple of dockyards at this point we are in a perfect position to carry the game on yes we are at war with the allies but no it really doesn't matter we have all the resources we need to build a competent fleet that we can use to take out the united kingdom our army is more than strong enough we can go on a little campaign in africa if we so choose we can gobble up turkey we can gobble up the rest of the baltics we have a pretty massive faction at our disposal and if we have the resources to take out the uk we can then go on a campaign towards Canada and the United States just to make it a fun long late game campaign just the kind that I hate but here we are we have reached our goal the Holy Roman Empire with no step back thank you once again Antasil for this strategy works very well might need some tweaking anyway let me know what you guys thought and I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoy the next one too